Hey guys, it's Mr. Vedi, and today we're doing uh, something a bit different. Usually we have our flipped class and we have our video done at home. Today what I want to do is I've set up a guided notes packet for you guys, and I actually want to look through these uh, guided notes, and I want to go through the notes that I've prepared, and so we can go one-on-one -on -one in class, and what you'll be doing is you'll be going through the guided notes with this video, and we'll be writing down the examples that I have up here, and I'll give you time to fill in your own work, and that way you'll be able to come back to me when we're done with the video and talk to me about what you learned from the video individually. So first you're going to fill out these. Uh, there's going to be a little time where I'm going to give you to try some practice problems that we have on the sheet of paper. And then when you're done, I want you to come to me individually and we'll talk about what you learned in the video and we'll start our extra work then. All right, our first question is, Dwight Howard invests $2,000 in an investment account which pays an annual interest rate of 3%. How many years will it take for his account to have a total of $3,507? So this problem is a bit interesting for uh, quite a few reasons. One is that we know that it's a growth formula and we know that it's a interest growth formula based off the context clues that we see here such as it pays him an annual interest rate. Now, usually we're given the rate and how much was invested, the principal, and it tells us the years. It tells us, how, it asks us rather, how much will you have in X amount of years. However, what they're telling us here is, they're telling us how much he's going to make. So they're asking us, when will he make this amount of money? When will he have a total of $3,507 in his account? Well, if we were to write an equation to represent this data, it would look something like this. So we'd have $3,507 equal 1.03, that's 1 plus the interest rate, which is 0 0.03, and that would be multiplied by the time. I'm sorry, uh, it would be raised to the time, so you'd have time as the exponent. Now, there's a bit of a problem here, because if we were to solve for time, Normally you'd say, all right, well, I just need to solve for t, so I do the inverse of whatever is going on in the function, and I'd find out what my variable is. So if there's multiplication happening, you would divide both sides. If there's addition, you'd subtract. But that's not what's happening here. What's happening is that the t is the exponent. So we need to find the inverse of an exponential, which we haven't quite learned yet. Well, the inverse of an exponential so with multiplication, the inverse is division. With addition, the inverse is subtraction. For an exponential function, meaning with something with a base and something with an exponent, so you have a base and an exponent, the inverse of that is a logarithm. So this unit, we're going to talk about logarithms. And logarithms are used to solve for variables in the exponent. Notice I've underlined that, and that's in red. It's also on your guided notes worksheet, so you should be copying this down in your guided notes worksheet. So logarithms come in the form log, and then you have that b, which is your base. You have a number, which rep is represented by the x, and that equals y. So each of these things are different aspects of my logarithm. And the way I read it is log base b of x equals y. Notice how I read log and I said what log base it was. And it's of that larger number. So that b right there, that's going to be our base. And our base is going to remain the same. You'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. Between exponentials and logarithms, our bases are always going to remain the same. So what we're going to learn how to do is switch between log form and exponential form. And we're going to be using what we call the swoosh or swag method. Now, really what this is doing when we are switching between the two forms is we're simply performing the inverse functions. So if you want to think about it, we're doing the subtraction to one's addition. That's what all logarithms are. They're the inverse of an exponential. So say we have a problem, like that's on your guide to worksheet, 5 to the third equals 125. So first, I, need, I want to identify a few things. My 5 is my base. My 3 is my exponent. So if I have that 5, what I'm going to do, if I wanted to find the inverse 
of that exponential. Remember, my exponential is 5 to the third. If I want to find the inverse of that exponential, I need to make it into a log. Well, I'm going to move that base over, so I'm going to swoosh that base over, and that's going to become the new base of my log. So I'm going to bring that 5, which is the base of that exponential, I'm going to bring it over, it's going to be underneath that 125, and then I'm going to put a log down right there. And what it'll look like, your finished product, will be 3 equals log base 5 of 125. Notice that the 5 remains the base in both problems. So the 5 did not change as being a base. It consistently remained a base. It was the base of your exponential and it was the base of your logarithm. What moved was that your exponent got dropped down so it was isolated and your 125 became the uh, what, what you were taking the log of. So let's fly through a few more problems. If I have 3 to the fifth that equals 100 243. Now if you type this in the calculator you'll see that yes 3 to the fifth does equal 243. But if we were to log this or we were to find the inverse we would bring our base and we bring it bring our base down and that would become the base of our new logarithm. So we'd put our log down there and we'd get 5 equals log base 3 of 243. And notice how I'm saying it, because how I'm saying it's very important. You have to remember, this is not log 3, 243, it's log base 3 of 243. Alright, this next one, log base 3 of 9 equals 2. So here it's a bit different, right? Because before we had exponential functions, now we have a logarithmic function. Before, what we were doing is we'd have an exponential function and we'd turn it into a log. We'd find the inverse and we'd switch it over to log. Here we have a log and we have a logarithmic function and we want to change it to an exponential function. Now, there's a few ways you can think about this before you actually just go off and do this swoosh or swag method. One way is to look at that base. So our base is, again, 3. And we're going to look at that base and we're going to say, if I have that base 3, what power would I raise that base to, which would give me 9, that larger number? Well, you all probably know you raise 3 to the second power, and you're going to get 9. Well, notice this. This is how I switch from log to exponential. I'm going to bring that base of the log, and it's going to become the base of my exponential. And that's how you switch from log form into exponential form. So the, now you have 3 to the second power equals 9. And obviously we all know that's true. Alright, let's try this one. Log base 2 of 16 equals 4. So once again, I look at my base 2. And some of you can think about, well, if I raise 2 to what power will I get 16? Or you can bring it over. The base of my log becomes the base of my exponential. So I swoosh it over, and I get 2 to the 4th power equals 64. And you can check that. That is indeed right. All right, on your paper, you guys have around 1, 2, you have two examples, and then you have a box of writing an exponential and logarithmic form. Uh, I want you guys to complete that. So if you need, you can go back in the video, maybe rewind a bit if you're a bit lost. And I want you to complete this chart. So pause the video complete the chart, and then when you get back, I'm just going to run through the answers. I'll just be showing the answers on the screen. So make sure to raise your hand if you have any questions on these. And pause the video so you can, so when you come back, I'll be going over the questions. All right, you should have for your first one, this is in log form, it gives it to you, and we're going to bring that 8 over. So the base becomes the base of the exponential and you'll get 8 to the 0 power equals 1. The next one, you have log base 3 of 9 equals 2. We're going to swoosh that 3 over, so the base becomes the base of my exponential, and I'll get 3 to the second power equals 9. 
Same thing over here, I have that 2 in my base, I bring it over, and I get 2 to the negative 4th equals 1 16th. Alright, I believe we switch it up here, and it becomes 10 to the 3rd power equals 1000. So we want to make this a, log, a logarithmic form. So remember, the base of my exponential becomes the base of my new logarithm. And this should be your final product. And we have two more to go. This is your exponential form. You bring the base over. And that's what you get. And then 5 to the third equals 125. We want to make this a logarithmic form. We bring the 5 over, so that's the new base of my log. And I got log base 5 of 125 equals 3. All right. So in your notes, we have, one, we have one more main artifact to cover in logs today, and that's change of base. Now, we can use our calculator to solve some logs. If our logs don't have any variables in it, we can actually use our calculator. And that's been being, uh, using change of base. And the change of base formula, specifically, if you have something like log base 3 of 9, again, in your head you could think, all right, I have a base of 3, so what could I raise 3 to to get 9? we know that's 2. But we're going to get numbers that don't go in evenly. So one way we're going to do this in our calculator is we're going to set up division. We're going to hit in our calculator log and we're going to hit 9 and that's going to be divided by your base log 3. So notice that you have a log of 9 divided by a log of 3. And one way to remember which one goes on the top and which one goes on the bottom is that your base so in this case the 3, the base will always go on the bottom. So the base always goes on the bottom, the base is always the denominator. So go ahead and try that out for 1 through 4. It's pretty straightforward, you just have to set it up. Uh, how would you type it in the calculator and then go ahead and type it in the calculator. So pause the video, go ahead and do this, and then when you get back to the video, I'll run through the answers. Alright, so for this problem, you should have set it up like this. Notice the base is in the bottom. For the and this is what you get if you plugged in the calculator, approximately 1.54. For this log base 4 of 25 should go should have had log of 25 over log of 4. 2.32 log base 3 of 18 should have got something like that. And then finally, log base 4 of 42. Set it up like this. Notice my bases are in the bottom in all of these. And that's what you should get. All right, now for actual solving, what you'll be expecting to solve for in your work today. So if you were to solve for x in this problem, you all already know how to do this. So I have 27. 27 is my base. I can bring that 27 over. So I can put that 27 and I can convert this to an exponential in order to solve for my x. Because right now my x is in my log and I can't really figure anything out. So I'm going to bring that 24 over, make it the new base of my log. I'm sorry. I'm going to bring it over and it's going to be the base of my exponential. And that's going to be 27 raised to the 4 thirds equals x. Now if you raise 27 to the 4 thirds, you'll get what, what x equals, and you need to cal put that in your calculator. Alright, if you have two logs, so this is on the bottom half of your sheet, if you have two logs, one on each side, they're going to cancel. So in this case, I have a log base 4, and then I have a log base 4, and notice they're on two different sides of the equal signs. So I have two logs, they're both different sides of the equal signs, What's going to happen is they're actually going to cancel out, but just the logs will. Just the logarithms will cancel out. So you'll cancel out the logarithms. You get just what's remaining. So 3x minus 1 equals 2x plus 3. And now you just solve it like a regular two-step equation. You subtract your and add your like terms, and you'll get x equals 4. All right, go ahead, and you have around seven, ex uh, ten examples to finish on your actual sheet of paper. So go ahead, finish that up. Uh, 
you can go back, rewind the video if you need any help, and then come to me when you're individually done with your guided notes, and I'll uh, lead you through the next process, all right?